welcome everyone. Um, we have a super educational uh, talk planned for you today with one of our men's health experts, Steph, who I'll intro in just a second. Um, I am Alicia from um, Legacy's communications team. I'll be serving as the moderator for this webinar. We're gonna be learning all about testosterone, testosterone therapy, and how taking tea uh, might impact your ability to have kids now or in the future. Uh, let's learn a little bit about uh, Legacy. Um, Legacy is a sperm testing and freezing company. Um, we offer at-home semen sample collection for semen analysis, DNA fragmentation testing, um, sperm cryopreservation, which is sperm freezing. Um, we also offer STI testing, supplements, and virtual fertility consults. Um, we are not a testosterone replacement therapy provider. We don't prescribe TRT. Um, but we do partner with CRT providers to ensure that their patients have the ability to test or preserve their fertility uh, before starting TRT or after uh, they've already been on TRT. Um, our clinical team is made up of experts in the men's health space, including Steph, um, who also deeply understand the impact of low testosterone and TRT on fertility. Um, so I'm going to introduce our expert tonight, Stephanie. Uh, there she is. She's also here. <laughs> um, Steph is a nurse and the head of clinical services for Legacy. Uh, her professional background is in neurology, specifically in men's health, and she's been working in this space for um, the past decade. She is certified in andrology. Andrology is the science of sperm and men's health. Um, and in her career before coming to Legacy, she did help patients manage testosterone therapy. Um, now she sees Legacy patients. Um, some of them are preserving fertility before TRT. Uh, some are trying to conceive after being on TRT for a while. Um, so Steph is an expert in this space and I'm really excited that uh, she'll be sharing uh, some uh, education with us tonight. Um, so we do have a lot to cover tonight. <laughs> this is sort of an overview of, of what we'll be doing. Um, I wanna make a quick note here that People might take testosterone for a ton of different reasons. Um, we're speaking tonight specifically to cisgender men, um, not to gender affirmation clients who might be taking testosterone as part of their transition. Uh, this talk, as you'll see, um, we'll be looking specifically at the impact of testosterone on sperm production and on male health overall. Um, so, so we'll be starting with the basics, um, what is testosterone, uh, how it works, um, how testosterone therapy works, how that affects your fertility, and then what you can sort of uh, do about that. So um, let's get started with the basics. What is testosterone? How exactly does it work in your body? Over to you, Steph. Thank you, Alicia. I appreciate it. And thank you, everybody, for being on here. So we're talking about testosterone. Testosterone, it's a sex hormone. So hormones are the body's chemical messengers. So they are going to be traveling from one organ or another place in the body, usually through the bloodstream, and they can affect many different bodily processes. Now, testosterone is the major uh, or primary sex hormone in males. It is essential to the development of male growth and masculine characteristics. So testosterone plays a lot of important roles in the body, such as things like development of the penis and testes, deepening of the voice during puberty, the appearance of facial and pubic hair, which starts at puberty. Uh, later in life, it can also play a part uh, in hair loss or balding. Also, it's going to have an impact on muscle size and strength, bone growth, sex drive or libido, and also sperm production. Now, uh, there's more than just testosterone here. So there's a feedback loop, and I'm gonna try to explain this in as simple of terms as possible. It is complicated. It does involve other hormones as well. So we're gonna be talking about hormones like GnRH or FSH or LH, which are all necessary in the production and release of testosterone, as well as in sperm production. And these might be some terms that if you've looked into TRT or if you're already doing it, you may be familiar with some of those terms. Now, signals that are sent from the brain to the pituitary gland, which lives at the base of the brain, control the production of testosterone in men. Now, the pituitary gland then relays signals to the testes telling them to produce testosterone. Now, this is known as a feedback loop. So this is going to be closely regulating the amount of hormones that are in the blood when testosterone levels are rising too high. The brain then sends signals to the pituitary to reduce or stop production of these hormones. So it's a, a balancing act, a delicate system. So rising levels of testosterone 
act on the hypothalamus in the brain, so that's part of the brain, and the pituitary gland to stop the release of that GnRH, FSH, and LH. So this system is working ever balancing testosterone in the blood at a steady and constant level in men. And this occurs after puberty. Now, if your testosterone levels become elevated above what would be normal levels, um, so that's something called the set point levels, then your testosterone will prevent the hypothalamus from secreting as much GnRH hormone. So this uh, will in turn cause lower levels of the FSH and LH to be produced. Now, why is that important? So lower LH levels will lower the amount of stimulation that cells in the testes receive and in turn will lower the production of testosterone. I know that's a lot and it's confusing. So because FSH, LH, and GnRH are all involved in that production of sperm, basically decreasing levels uh, are also going to decrease sperm production levels. Cool. So it's really just like a constant cycle of sort of your body trying to figure out where you're at, producing what you need, um, and then balancing that out. Is that, yeah. That is very <laughs> much accurate. I could spend an hour trying to break down and explain the intricacies of that feedback loop. We'll, we'll jump back to it a little later on in the talk, just to sort of revisit some of those topics. But yes, very important. <laughs> Um, let's talk a little bit about low testosterone, low T. Um, so I know this issue is actually pretty common now. Um, what is considered normal when it comes to testosterone? So there isn't a set number per se. So normal testosterone levels in men, generally speaking, they're going to range from anywhere from 300 to 1000. So I know that's a pretty broad spectrum. Uh, different labs are going to use slightly different reference ranges for what they deem as normal versus abnormal. So uh, we don't want people to get too hung up on the precise numbers because different labs might be referencing differently. Also, um, there are some age specific testosterone averages that I can share with you. So uh, according to a, a research study that was done in 2022, um, shown here on this slide, you can see that these ranges vary slightly based on age um, and some known declines that happen with testosterone just as part of the aging process. So you can see what 20 to 24 year olds, roughly 409 to 558 comparing that to say a 40 year old to 44 year old who might be at 350 to 473 might be considered normal for them. Sure. Uh, does this drop happen like all at once in a similar way to menopause or is it like at a particular age or is it sort of over time? That's a great question. So um, as men age, testosterone levels drop gradually. So yeah. it's a ballpark one to 2% each year. So um, unlike the rapid drop, uh, like you mentioned in estrogen that happens during menopause in women, um, it's a little bit of a different process. So the testes produce less testosterone. Uh, so there's fewer signals from the pituitary telling the testes to make that testosterone. Yeah. Also of note, as men get older, their livers make more of uh, a, something called sex hormone binding globulin, so SHBG. Uh, so that is something that binds to testosterone that's circulating in the bloodstream. So all of this uh, reduces the active or free form of testosterone in the body. That free testosterone is uh, versus total people might be familiar with those terms. Uh, more than a third of men over the age of 45 um, may have reduced levels of testosterone um, than what would be considered normal range. Although defining an optimal level of testosterone is really difficult to do and the subject is pretty controversial. Makes now, sense. there's going to be factors that also contribute to low testosterone in men. So some of those, and not exclusive to these, but are going to be things like age, obesity, um, metabolic disorders such as diabetes, um, any sort of genetic disorders. Um, one example would be something like Klein-Belter syndrome, um, could be disorders um, or tumors of the pituitary, hypothalamus or thyroid gland, um, any sort of testicular injury or testicular failure. And when I say injury, I am not referring to that soccer ball hit that you might have taken in the third grade or something. I'm talking about a serious injury, something that um, may have lended a visit to the hospital. 
Um, also, there's certain prescription medications um, that could be impacting this or chemotherapy, radiation treatments, or even excessive alcohol consumption or even marijuana usage. Uh, testosterone levels nationally have been pretty steadily decreasing um, more than 1% per year since the 1980s. Um, so this is an ongoing problem. And this is in addition to those normal decreases that we see with aging as well. So it seems like testosterone decline is actually like a global issue in addition to just being a personal issue. It is, it is globally, uh, not only testosterone, but overall fertility rates have halved in the past 70 years. So, I mean, that's alarming. That le that's talking about leaving us about 50% less fertile than what our grandfathers were. Um, that's a big jump. Um, this suspected is largely, you know, likely due to endocrine disrupting chemicals that we're exposed to in our everyday lives, as well as the epigenetic effects that come from them in addition to some lifestyle factors, as well as those environmental factors, it's a bit of a combination. And I'll share some of the symptoms of a testosterone deficiency in adult men um, can be things like reduced body or facial hair, uh, loss of muscle mass or muscle tone, low libido, impotence or erectile dysfunction, uh, small testicles or reduced sperm count or infertility, also increased breast size in men, which is something called gynecomastia, uh, could be hot flashes, irritability, poor concentration, um, even clinical depression, loss of body hair, uh, brittle bones or increased risk of bone fracture. So if someone wants to increase their testosterone levels and like relieve some of those symptoms that we just talked about, they might be prescribed a medication, right? Like TRT. Um, so what is TRT? What are the different forms of it? And how does it kind of work? So, uh, so testosterone, TRT is testosterone replacement therapy. So basically that is just the medical therapy where you're introducing exogenous testosterone into the body. So you're introducing testosterone that was not produced by your own body. Um, there's two primary reasons, there's many reasons, but two primary reasons for taking TRT. So the first one is going to be someone has a testosterone deficiency. So that is something that would be clinically low testosterone. Uh, you might have heard of the term hypogonadism. That's the medical term for having clinically low testosterone. Um, also, the other uh, primary reason for taking it would be people who are looking to increase vitality or longevity or to improve athletic performance. Um, it's important, though, to remember that both of those reasons are going to have very differing impacts on fertility, and they're going to need to be managed slightly different medically. Um, in either case, uh, it's important to make sure that, you know, you're taking steps to preserve your fertility prior to starting on TRT, regardless of the root cause um, of the or reasoning for you to, to be on it, because one thing that we can guarantee for pretty much everyone is that unfortunately TRT will negatively impact your sperm parameters. And that's again, regardless of the reasons you're taking it. Now, there's gonna be different medications that can be used to increase testosterone levels. Uh, there is TRT. So that is something that comes in various forms such as transdermal patches or gels, uh, could be injectable testosterones or could be pellet form. Uh, those pellets are impl uh, implanted under the skin and are a slow release over a period of many months. Um, then we have alternative options of what we would consider to be more fertility safe ways of increasing testosterone. And that can be done with medications such as Clomid, which comes in pill form, an oral medication, or something called HCG, which is an injectable medication. That medication is sometimes used in conjunction with TRT or on its own. Um, so we know that uh, many people who have low testosterone, they want, they do want kids. Um, they don't have kids already, but they want more maybe either uh, now or in the future. Um, so let's do a quick pop quiz to see if people were paying attention. Um, and a uh, quiz will pop up on your screen. Let's see if you can I'll give people like 20, 30 seconds to. Oh, it's so fun to see the, like it tells me what percentage of people have responded. 
<laughs> oh, that's fun because I don't see that part. Oh. I just <laughs> hopefully people are listening and paying attention. Fingers crossed. Okay, a couple more seconds. Great. Okay, share the results. Um, so yeah, it looks like people were mostly paying attention. Um, <laughs> uh, there is, I think, an assumption, sort of a, a myth that higher testosterone equates to better fertility. That taking testosterone can actually improve your fertility, um, but that is a, it's a myth, it's a common myth. Um, actually, uh, we did a survey um, about a year ago of like 2000 respondents. And one of the things that we found was that like three quarters of people actually believed that taking testosterone would give you better uh, sperm count. So this is really widespread, um, but you guys were paying attention, which is awesome. So um, let us dive into um, how testosterone therapy affects sperm and um, your future fertility. So in order to understand the impacts of TRT on your fertility, first you need to understand what your sperm parameters are. So some of the things that we're looking at are going to be things like concentration. So, or that can also be referred to as count. Uh, this is the number of how many sperm we see in any individual sample. Uh, there's also DNA fragmentation. Uh, DNA fragmentation analysis is an advanced male fertility test that measures, it's done during a semen analysis, um, and that's measuring the percentage of abnormal or damaged strands of DNA that are carried by sperm. So higher levels of sperm DNA fragmentation can contribute to in complete infertility, uh, recurring miscarriage, or even poor health outcomes for future children uh, to be born of that sperm. We also look at a metric called morphology. Morphology refers specifically to size and shape alone. Um, it's a what I would consider a pretty antiquated way at looking at sperm. It is probably the grayest of all gray areas when it comes to fertility. There's a lot of question marks in gray area in fertility in general, but I would say this being the largest, it is uh, the one parameter that is least understood by the science community as a whole, uh, as far as how much, if any impact, it even has at all on conception. Um, we're also looking at motility. This is an important one. This tells us how the sperm themselves are swimming and moving. Good motility is key and necessary for natural conception to occur, as well as for certain forms of assistive reproduction. Um, you do need to have motility for some, not all. Uh, and then we're also looking at volume. So volume is the amount of ejaculate that's being measured. Sperm are a very small component of that ejaculate, which is predominantly made up of seminal fluid. Uh, some people say, oh, my sperm should be fine. I've got plenty of ejaculate. Um, the two do not go hand in hand. So just because you have lots of ejaculate or seminal fluid does not mean you have lots, if any, sperm in it. Um, they are not visible to the naked eye. So uh, the term azospermia. Uh, is something that we're going to talk about. So that is, azospermia is ge generically defined as basically a complete absence of sperm from the fluid that is ejaculated during orgasm. So no sperm seen in the semen. Now, research shows that most people on TRT are likely to become azospermic after only four to six months of use. That's a really important fact to remember. Now, clinical research around testosterone usage and sperm parameters is varied. Um, I've, we've got a few studies referenced here on this slide. You can read through some of these numbers and percentages. Um, but the one constant that you're going to see or overarching theme here is the fact that taking testosterone is guaranteed to have a negative impact on your future fertility and sperm production in some way. And some of these numbers are quite high. I mean, 82 to 90%, 86 to 100%. These are not small numbers to just dismiss. So why is this happening? So this, we're going back to that feedback loop that I spoke about a little bit earlier. So talking about increasing levels of testosterone in the bloodstream by adding it artificially, is going to lower the hormones FSH and LH, which control sperm production specifically. So again, this is basically just like a carefully calibrated system of testosterone and sperm production and adding that extra testosterone really throws it off balance. Is that a fair statement? Exactly. It's a very delicate balancing act. So then the next natural question I get from most people is how long does it take? 
uh, for testosterone to impact sperm production. Uh, the reality of that is that no one knows for sure. Nobody can precisely tell you an answer, uh, but it likely starts impacting production immediately. Um, and the effects of that have been seen in clinical research in as little as 10 weeks of usage. Yeah, I think what people like often mean when they're asking this question is like, how long will I have sperm basically after starting TRT? Um, and I think what you're saying, like the truth is that we really can't answer that question. There are so many sort of factors that affect it. Um, your baseline sperm count, the dose that you're on, how frequently you're taking it. Um, so the safest bet is probably to assume like you'll be infertile right away or, or you'll have a reduced sperm count right away. Does that make sense? It absolutely does. And that is typically how I counsel patients around. If you are about to embark on TRT, you want to assume the worst. So assume that you will become completely infertile and plan accordingly. Um, maybe you'll be one of the lucky ones who isn't, and that's fantastic and we're thrilled, but you definitely want to prepare yourself for anything could happen. Um, it's also varied greatly patient to patient um, and completely unpredictable as to whether or not you might respond differently than me or vice versa. Um, a question I often get is, can you recover sperm production after you stop testosterone? Um, that answer is a tough one. Um, you know, I would have to answer that with a big old question mark and, and say, maybe. Um, and that's the reality of it is that's the best anyone can answer you. Um, timeline and the possibility for recovery really depends on a lot of factors. So like you had said before, you know, how long you've been on testosterone, uh, what your dosing might have been, uh, what your age is um, when you started it and what your age is now, as well as what your baseline sperm parameters were prior to starting on T. So did you have normal parameters or were there other things going on that were negatively impacting your sperm health at the time? Um, in general, you would need to come off of it for typically six months to upwards of even two years in some cases before you'll even know the true long-term effects of being on TRT and your fertility. So recovering your fertility after testosterone therapy, it's important to know it is never guaranteed. Um, in one study that was done, 30% of men were never able to restore normal sperm counts after being on a testosterone for a period of just 12 months. Uh, there are dozens more studies just like it. Yeah, and um, if I'm not mistaken, in this study, uh, they actually like took medication. I think they were taking HCG to improve sperm production after they paused testosterone, and they still were not able to achieve a normal sperm count. Um, and I think this is a really important point because like the bottom line here is that it's really such an unknown just how um, TRT will affect your fertility in the long term. Um, let's talk about other effects of testosterone therapy besides just on your sperm count. What are other things that people might, might um, anticipate as side effects? Well, taking exogenous testosterone can stop your body from producing it on its own. So this goes back again to that feedback loop. You'll be hearing that in your sleep tonight um, <laughs> that I was talking about earlier. So when your body recognizes that there's enough or even too much testosterone, your brain is signaling your testicles to stop producing it. So your body has no way of identifying how the testosterone got there. They just, your body just knows that there's enough and it should not make it anymore. So the testosterone will prevent the secretion of as much of that GnRH that we spoke about earlier. This in turn, again, lowering those levels of LH to be produced, lower LH equals lower production of testosterone. Um, it's all cyclic, right? So this is all a cycle. Now, too much testosterone. So when we talk about having too much testosterone, this is something that um, having too much naturally occurring testos testosterone in your body is not a common problem. This is, would be something that was very rare. Um, many people who are supplementing testosterone end up with levels that are too high or they'll have too much, things that put them on the upper end of normal or even above normal limits. Um, it can be really difficult defining what normal per se testosterone levels are. So blood levels of testosterone vary pretty drastically over time. And even just during the course of a single day, you know, early morning versus evening testosterone levels are going to be different. 
Um, most of what we know uh, scientifically about abnormally high testosterone levels in men, it, it comes from athletes and research has been done on people who are using testosterone replacement therapy already, um, or people who have used anabolic steroids or other hormones uh, that they have taken to increase muscle mass or to increase or improve athletic performance. So some of the problems that might be associated with having artificially high or too high testosterone levels uh, could be things like low sperm counts, um, actual shrinking of testicular size, impotence, erectile function problems. Um, most people mistakenly believe that more testosterone um, equates to better performance or um, it would equate to more fertility or better improved fertility, which is completely false. Um, you can also have some more serious problems, things like heart muscle damage, increased risk of heart attack, uh, prostate enlargement, which can cause some difficulty with urinating, as well as an increased uh, prostate cancer risk. Um, also can lead to things like liver disease, um, adult acne, uh, fluid retention with swelling of legs and feet, weight gain even. Um, that is suspected uh, possibly related in part to the increased appetite that comes with taking this, but uh, it's not very clear in research. And other things like high blood pressure or even higher cholesterol. Then also another other common problems associated with high testosterone levels are going to be things like insomnia, uh, headaches or recurring headaches, increased muscle mass, which for many is the reason they're taking uh, the testosterone in the first place. Um, but it also comes with increased risk of blood clots, um, if taken in adolescence, it could be stunted growth in adolescence. Also, some uncharacteristically aggressive behaviors. Uh, that piece isn't well studied or clearly proven as of yet. Um, you know, I, I sort of refer to it as what people always say, roid rage and things like that that can happen with these higher levels. Um, but there are some question marks around that. Um, also, mood swings are common. Uh, euphor feelings of euphoria, also irritability can go both ways. Um, some impaired judgment and even delusional thinking. So it's really important uh, to speak with your doctor about any and all potential risks that could be associated with uh, TRT to determine what your personal risk factors might be and if TRT is right for you. Um, just like with any medication, just because there is clearly a lengthy list of risks, it does not mean you will personally be impacted by any or all of those things, but they are all possibilities and things that you should talk to your doctor uh, about before making a decision either way. Um, so if someone has not started TRT yet, um, but they're planning on it or they're thinking about it, what can they do to protect their fertility? Um, we're going to talk about that. But first, we're going to do a pop quiz. Hopefully you'll see it. Um, let's see if people know the best way to protect their fertility while taking TRT. I do love these pop quizzes. <laughs> Uh, I feel like Alex Trebek, you know? <laughs> I, I'm rooting for everyone to answer these correctly. <laughs> okay, we've got about half of everyone has responded. We'll give a couple more seconds. Ooh, some split answers here. I love it. Okay, cool. Uh, cool. Okay. Um, so... Uh, we did have some split answers and we are going to talk about HCG in just a second here. Um, but but the best way, and, and Steph will go over this <laughs> pretty in depth, the best way to preserve uh, and protect your fertility before starting to TRT is uh, to freeze your sperm. And, and Steph will go into that uh, pretty in depth. Um, so let's talk about the HCG piece, Steph. Um, so yeah, <laughs> I, I love that there were split answers because honestly, there is so much confusion about this specific question and it's something that comes up often. Uh, one of the most common things that I hear literally daily from patients I'm counseling um, around their fertility are questions with for people who are dealing with um, infertility and specifically azospermia. Um, and the problem is that many of them were told that taking HCG would preserve their fertility. Uh, this Now this can help in some cases, but it is absolutely not guaranteed. I would argue that I actually see more cases where it has failed than not. Um, in 2018, there was a really interesting case study published um, of a, a gentleman who was on TRT 
in conjunction with anastrozole and HCG for one year. Um, he experienced complete azospermia and was unable to recover normal sperm counts after nine months of coming off of testosterone. This is just one of many cases um, just like it in regards to HCG. Yeah, that case study was so interesting, Steph, because the patient they were writing about actually reported that he had been assured by his prescriber, basically, that this regimen of HCG and testosterone would allow for uh, for him to be continue being fertile, even though he was taking testosterone. And obviously that was not the case, um, which is like news nobody wants to get after the fact. So I think um, being proactive is really important here. Even if HCG in some cases can help, the fact that it's not guaranteed means that um, people should be taking other proactive steps if having kids in the future is, is important for them. Yeah, that can be, it can be absolutely devastating news if you thought all along you would have no, I think sometimes we take our fertility for granted um, and people assume, yep, I'll have no problem. And when the time comes, um, really the best way to preserve your fertility before starting on TRT is to freeze your sperm prior. Um, this can actually be the determining factor as to whether or not some people will ever be able to have a biological child in the future. That's big. Um, freezing your sperm is going to at least ensure that if you are unable to maintain sperm production or to recover sperm production that would be sufficient for natural conception, that you would at least still have the ability to have biological children via assistive reproductive techniques like IUI or IVF. Um, this can be just the absolute worst news for someone who maybe really did always want a biological child, or maybe when they started on TRT, they didn't think they needed to freeze because at the time, maybe they were young and didn't think they wanted children. I always say uh, 20 year old me and, you know, 35, 40 year old me were very different people. And what I wanted in life changed a little bit over the years. And for some people, they sort of disregard the need to, to think about that fertility because at the time they might not be thinking they want children, but you just never know. Yeah. Um, so freezing sperm, we're talking a lot about freezing sperm. So uh, we'll I'll talk you through how it works with legacy. So first you can go online on your own um, at any point in time and order a test kit. So you're gonna be able to produce your sample at home via masturbation. Um, it's gonna be collected in the privacy and comfort of your own home. Um, included in that test kit is going to be a transport buffer media. So that's what preserves the motility in transit. Um, but also there is going to be a prepaid FedEx shipping label. Um, this makes the process even that much easier because once you produce your sample, um, you are simply going to attach that prepaid shipping label to the outside of your box. Um, give FedEx a call at their 800 number and schedule a pickup right from your doorstep. Or um, you can alternatively drop it off at a FedEx uh, drop-off location that's convenient to you if you prefer to do that. Uh, your sample is then going to be overnighted to our lab where it is texted the next morning, uh, tested the next morning and then frozen uh, pretty much immediately after testing. Uh, and it is really just that simple. Uh, how does this at-home process compare to like a traditional way of freezing sperm? Like the old school <laughs> way? Yeah, so doing this um, from a traditional way of using a, a traditional sperm bank or an in-person lab or clinic um, is quite the process, quite the unpleasant process. To be honest, um, from my time working in the hospital setting, we'd have patients come in and do this um, on occasion, and it was just not great for anyone. So um, that's a process that requires physician orders. So you would have to see a doctor in person, have them order this test for you. Then they are only done by appointment. So you need to make appointments that can take, uh, sometimes in these andrology labs, it can take months uh, to get in. Typically they're at very inconvenient times and very limited availability. Um, and then it is infinitely more awkward and uncomfortable of an experience when you need to produce your sample um, in that room with the black leather couch and the outdated pornography. Nobody <laughs> wants to do that. It is very unpleasant. Um, you can hear people in the hallway talking about what's taking so long or, you know, what's going on? What are you having for lunch? And how was your weekend? And nobody wants to deal with that. Um, <laughs> the good thing about doing this as well, you know, whether, regardless of whether you're doing this in that awkward clinic experience or if you're doing it from home is that frozen samples can be used in the future 
for procedures like IUI or IVF, these might be, they may or may not be familiar terms if you've looked into assistive reproduction. Um, but the most important piece that I wanna highlight really is that samples do not degrade over time. So they can be used at any time in the future. So hypothetically, if you were to freeze your sperm at age 25, um, and let's say at age 40, you decide you are ready to use it. You're ready to conceive. Um, it's as if 25 year old you were conceiving. So the younger you are, the healthier the sperm is going to be. Um, and that doesn't change. The samples can be used. Um, I wanna say the oldest frozen sample that was ever used successfully to conceive a child for IVF was just shy of 50 years. I wanna say it was 47, I think it was 47 or 48 years um, in cryo storage. And there is zero impact. You are literally essentially freezing time when you are freezing your sperm. Um, and so that's important to know as well. Um, we can't talk about TRT, overall sperm health, and all of these other things without also just throwing in a mention and discussing a little bit of lifestyle and some environmental factors that also can negatively impact sperm. So for anybody who may be interested in conceiving now or in the future, um, there are a few important things that I want to throw out there, um, just so that you're aware, these are things you want to avoid in the months leading up to trying to conceive. Um, so that's going to be things like supplements that contain testosterone or anything that claims to have testosterone boosting agents or testosterone boosting ability. Uh, those are things you're going to want to avoid. Also, any exposures to high temperatures. So high temperatures can be anything like hot tubs, steam rooms, saunas, hot yoga classes. Uh, this time of year, I'm based in New England. It is very cold. Those heated seats that people are using in their cars right now. Um, those are things you want to be um, conscious of not using at a period of time before conceiving. Um, also sat what we call saddle sports. So saddle sports are going to be really anything that has you seated in a straddled position. So this could be something like riding a bicycle, a, a traditional bike, it could be a Peloton, this could be horseback riding, it could be motorcycles, anything like that. Um, also gaining popularity. I cannot imagine why, because it's my worst nightmare, but those cold plunge ice baths, uh, people are buying big chest freezers, filling them with ice water and jumping in. Um, people, there are some health benefits to doing that, um, but that can also wreak havoc on your fertility potential. Um, and also wearing compressive undergarments, those things like briefs, boxer briefs, compression shorts, uh, bike shorts, running tights or leggings, all of those things can have a negative impact on fertility. Now, I do want to mention, unlike uh, testosterone or hormonal therapies, which could potentially have long-term or lifelong impacts, these lifestyle factors are not going to have lifelong impacts on your fertility. When I say think about these, it's really in like you want to start thinking about avoiding these things three months or so uh, prior to starting on your trying to conceive journey. So these aren't things that are going to cause lifelong damage or anything like that. You don't have to give up, you know, that jacuzzi tub for the rest of your life. It's just a few months. Um, so that's important to know. Um, okay, we are at the home stretch here. As you can see, we're on our last topic. Um, thank you for staying with us. Um, so lastly, let's talk about trying to conceive after being on TRT. Um, so what if someone has been on TRT for a few weeks or even a few years um, and they want to have kids now? Uh, what can they do to sort of understand the impact on their fertility or improve their chances of getting someone pregnant? Um, so we're gonna start with our last pop quiz. Let's see if see if people know. See what they, see what they know. I'm rooting for them. <laughs> I hope in. everyone's been listening. I do love these quizzes. <laughs> One second. No one answered increase my dose of testosterone, which is good. That means people were paying attention. Hey, we're like, <laughs> <laughs> um, cool. So uh, the right answer is to get a semen analysis. And we will talk a little bit about starting HCG or Clomid. Um, but really, the first place to start is with understanding where you stand right now. 
you need to know your numbers. I would say that's really um, that I don't want people to come out of this. I am not trying to scare everyone away uh, from TRT. I'm certainly not trying to bring on impending doom and gloom. Um, there is there's a lot of question marks around, you know, the what ifs with TRT. And I don't want anyone who may be listening right now or watching this recording later to think, oh no, I've been on testosterone for a year, for two years, for five years, it's over for me. That's not the case. Um, so like I said, you need to know your numbers. So you should always know and be monitoring you know, your lab values when you're on testosterone, right? So you really should be, um, you know, you should be compliant with having those labs drawn. Um, you need to know where you stand because it does vary. And just because you're on the same dosage for a long time doesn't mean at some point you're not going to have a swing in one direction or the other. So know those testosterone levels, but also you really do need to have a semen analysis done to determine what your sperm parameters are. Um, I mentioned it briefly before, but there are some things like those lifestyle factors or other things that I didn't get into because I could go on for hours about things that can impact sperm quality, but there's lots of things that could be going on that impact sperm beyond testosterone and hormone balance. Um, in a perfect world, um, you would have frozen a sperm sample prior to initiating TRT. Uh, but if not, you can still freeze a sample after the fact if you are still producing sperm. Now, if you plan on conceiving naturally, it's gonna be important to continually monitor your sperm parameters by testing at somewhat regular intervals, because again, at any point, these numbers can change and drop off. So you could continue to stay on TRT hypothetically and still be producing sperm sufficient for natural conception, but there's no way to know at what point, boom, your body just says, nope, I don't do that anymore and shuts it down. So it is important to stay on top of that. Um, it's also impossible to predict at what point those parameters are going to start to drop or when it's going to halt. Um, so I would say you never want to assume that if you just do one semen analysis and you have sperm, great. You know, you don't want to assume that that's always going to be the case because it won't necessarily. So I would say the best advice I can give anyone really is talk to a specialist. Um, you can, I can't possibly get enough content in to just this hour to really give you everything you need to know. Um, if you're unsure of what your sperm parameters are or what they mean specifically for you or your personal future fertility, you really should talk to an expert, someone who can help you to better understand all of this, as well as what your options might be to either recover or improve your sperm or what your options for conception may be involving assistive reproductive procedures that for some might be necessary. So uh, the process for testing only, so someone who isn't necessarily looking to freeze right out of the gate, maybe you're just curious and you wanna test your sperm, the process is exactly the same as the process I went through before for people freezing. You order that kit, you produce your sample at home, you overnight it to the lab, um, once you receive your results, if you didn't elect to freeze a sample beforehand, you've got time, um, at least with Legacy, they offer complimentary storage for a week um, post receiving your results. So you can have time to talk to an expert um, or determine if you want to preserve that sample. Um, in some cases, it's important to speak with an expert to know um, really just because parameters are maybe lower than desirable or even quite low, um, that doesn't mean it's not a sample that couldn't be used for processes like IVF. So um, that's where those com important conversations need to happen to see what your chances are going to be at conception, what those odds might be uh, based on your specific results, and then you can make decisions accordingly after the fact. And again, doing it with legacy means you collect your sample from home, way less awkward than the uh, traditional way of, of doing an analysis. Um, so what if someone does this analysis and they do have uh, poor sperm parameters, maybe they're isospermic or they have a very low sperm count, low sperm production, what's some next steps they might consider? So first thing I tell everyone is please don't panic. Um, you know, again, like I said, we're not trying to, you know, incite panic amongst people. Um, I don't want people to think if this is the end of the road, if their results are not what they anticipated. So if you have poor parameters, you really need to talk to someone, talk to your prescriber. Um, I would always start with the person prescribing your testosterone. Um, talk to them about pausing it. 
um, you're going to need to come off of it realistically for at least six months, if not longer. Um, there are going to be some nuances and differences as to how you treat this based on the reasons you're on TRT. So jumping back to what I said initially when we started this talk, you know, for people who have clinically low testosterone levels, they might need to be medically managed slightly differently than someone who is just taking it for vitality, longevity, or for athletic performance. So there are going to be some, some nuances there. Um, but you may need to have a conversation with your doctor about continuing on some supportive medications like the Clomid or HCG that we talked about before. That's just a few. Uh, there are others. Um, also, you should be monitoring semen analysis tests to see if your sperm production has resumed or if you had sperm production, but the parameters were low, you want to see if those numbers are coming up. Uh, you also may need to consider treatment for male factor infertility. There is, again, always that possibility that IVF or IVF with ICSI uh, may be, for some people, their only alternative. So those might be conversations you need to have at some point along this journey. Um, either way, um, you know, there are, there are so many question marks surrounding TRT, you know, the impacts on sperm. The key takeaway that I hope that everybody gets from this is that the only real guarantee I can give you is that TRT will impact your fertility and your future fertility. Um, and we just want to make sure that people are properly educated on ways to protect that. Um, and I just want to thank everyone so much for sticking this out till the end, for taking the time to attend this session, um, to talk about TRT and fertility. Hopefully, this was informative and helpful for any future fertility planning that you might be doing. And hopefully, at least some portion of this or all of this can help to protect your legacy.